And uh, if God can get a hold of your pocket, he's got you. <laughs> if he doesn't have a hold of your pocket or pocketbook, he doesn't have you yet. And uh, that really is a measure. A lot of times God moves in a service when, when the seed is being taken up. And sometimes not, he won't move when, through just preaching. But when I've been in service here lately where people have brought money and just had me sit down and just threw money on the floor and brought it up without me announcing anything about the offering. The Holy Ghost just anointed it and brought it about. Amen. That's how badly the Holy Ghost wants to bless. And the Holy Ghost is a blesser. And uh, he knows how to pour out uh, from God's vault of heaven unlimited resources. And, you know, it's been salt and peppered a little bit here and there, but in these latter days now, it's just going to be a deluge. It's going to be a fire hose. It's just going to cascade down from the waterfalls of glory and saturate people's lives with abundance. Can you say amen? So we've been breaking strongholds and breaking these impositions and oppositions to people that have not been able to gain access to what heaven has for them. And to see them get the breakthroughs is quite amazing. Aren't you happy when somebody else gets blessed? I know I am. Praise God. I know I'm blessed. I'm blessed, and, I, and I'm happy when I see people get blessed. And it, it's quite, it, it's quite, it's quite gratifying. Amen. Um, if you look at Second Chronicles, chapter. One verse twelve. It says, "Therefore, wisdom and knowledge uh, have been granted to you. Wisdom and knowledge have been granted to you, and I will also give you um, riches." Isn't that something? Now, this is God talking here. In Second Chronicles one twelve, he says, "Therefore, wisdom and knowledge uh, has been given or granted to you." So, what's a precursor for uh, riches? Wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom. We need wisdom in all of our getting. We need to get wisdom. Christ is wisdom. He's a fountainhead of wisdom. So, Second Chronicles one twelve. Therefore, wisdom and knowledge have been. Granted to you. This is God talking to Solomon. And I also will give you riches and uh, wealth and honor. Unlike anything given to the king before you or after. Look at those strange noises out there. But anyway, therefore wisdom and knowledge has been, has been, has been granted to you. And you know what? When you have wisdom, you'll never be without riches and wealth. Amen. Amen. And God spoke to uh, Solomon here very matter-of-factly and said, I'm giving it to you. I will give also to you riches and wealth. Now, he could have said just riches, but here he said riches and wealth. So how many know God is a wealth spring? And he wants to bless you in every facet and phase of your life. Amen. 
I mean, every area of your life. He wants to, you to have extra special care, extra special privileges, extra special things. God wants to help you make up your house and make up your home and make up your status and make up your life and give you a lifestyle that is worth bragging to people about that God has given. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love that. Um, yeah. I love that. And if you look at Second Chronicles 20, verse 6, and he said, and... Um, O oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God who is in heaven? And do you not rule over all the nations of the kingdoms of the world? Do you not have power and might and in your hand no one can stand against you? No one can stand against you. God is a God of heaven and um, he rules over all the nations of the earth. All the kingdoms of the earth belong to him. So when you talk about God giving riches and wealth in the days of Solomon, nations literally brought tribute to Solomon. Nations, kingdoms of the earth brought riches and wealth to Solomon. Because God controls all of the traffic of resources in the world. Thank you, Lord. I love that. Thank you, Jesus. For uh, in in uh, Second Chronicles thirty two twenty nine, it says, "And he made uh, cities for himself, and he acquired herds and sheep and cattle and abundance." For God gave him very great wealth. God gave him very great. Everybody say, God gave him very great wealth. God is infinitely rich. Infinitely rich. Beyond degree. There's no comparison. He, he controls heaven and he rules over the earth through heaven and he causes heaven to influx, to infiltrate, to capture. He causes heaven to literally take control of the kingdoms of this earth and give it to those whom he blesses. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That God has power over the earth like that. Amen. I like what it says. It says in 1 Samuel uh, 27, or no, chap uh, chapter 12. Well, no, is it 12? No, it's chapter 2, verse 78. The Lord makes the poor and he makes rich he brings low and he buildeth or lifteth up the lord himself maketh the poor and he maketh rich who is it that can make you wealthy god himself will make you wealthy 
And you know, when you lose your financial stability and when you lose your financial fidelity and when you lose your financial position and when you lose your financial well-being, your financial health, you are in captivity. You are in captivity because the things that you want to do, many times you cannot do because you cannot afford to do it. Hello. And you know, I follow that up and, and I back that up with Job chapter 42 in verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for um, his friends. Also, the Lord gave twice as much as he had had before. Doubled it. He gave him twice as much. But the Lord turned the captivity of Job. God can turn your captivity. God can reroute your positioning. God can reset your life and give you the things that the devil has tried to tell you that you can't have and has tried to prevent you from getting and tried to stop you from enjoying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. God loves you. God wants to assist you. God wants to readjust your life. God has the power to do it. Can you say amen? You know, Deuteronomy 8, 8, 8, 18 says, God giveth you power to get wealth. Why? That he might confirm his covenants with you. The Abrahamic covenant might be ratified in your life. So you can express the truth of God's covenant with man. God promised Abraham the whole world. He said he promised Abraham the whole earth. You and I are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. God made his promise to Abraham through his seed, Jesus Christ. All the promises of God are in him, in Christ. Yes and amen. They're all fulfilled in Christ. Can you say praise the Lord? God's not saying no. God's saying yes to you. Why do we hesitate? You know, in Psalm 62 and verse 11, God has spoken once, and I've heard this, that the power belongeth unto God. Power belongs unto God. And then he says in Deuteronomy 8, 18, Behold, I give you power to get wealth. Where does power originate? Power originates from God. Hallelujah. I love that. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is amazing. God is phenomenal. You know, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. He says that God is able. Not only is God powerful, but he is also able. You don't think that he's able to get you to the next level, or you'd already be there. You don't think that he's able to take you out of your limited situation and put you to an unlimited place, or you'd already be there. You don't really believe that God has the power to do it or the ability to, to actually transact in your complicated station of life and take you from where you are to where he is and to where he wants you to be, or else you'd already be there. You're convinced of something other than that. You know, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. 
Grace is God, riches at Christ's expense. That you always having all sufficiency, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Look at that. Having all sufficiency in all things. No matter what, God wants you to abound. You know, some people, they're, they're content to get a breakthrough and a little miracle here and then Maybe six months down the road, they're content to maybe get a little trickle there. And, and then, you know, once in a while, God may bring in some unexpected check or, you know, a little bit of cash here and kind of tickle the innards, you know what I mean? Tickle the strings of the person. The person may get excited by putting a little toe in the water. But that's not the way it's supposed to work. The devil laughs. And he gets joy. And he's happy to see people lock up financially. Because if he cannot lock you up in jail itself, he want to lock you up financially. Keep you in the same old house. Keep you with the same old car. Keep you with the same old situation. Keep you with the same old, on the same old limit. He loves that. And we, not, we need not be content to live like that. If you're content like that, that means you have lost your luster, you've lost your power, you're in filibuster, and you're being, you're being uh, ransacked by the enemy. You know, Psalm 1-3 says, and he shall be, talking about man uh, that serves God, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. A tree planted by the rivers of water. In other words, a concourse, a flow, a non-stop experience of receiving the waters of resources flowing into your life. He shall be like a tree, like a tree planted by the water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever he or she doeth shall prosper. Hallelujah. So many of us need a refreshing. So many of us need a new inspiration. We need a new infilling. We need a new uh, uh, a manifestation from God. We, we need a new cycle of things to kickstart our lives again and get us running on the right track. Amen. Yeah. I mean, those poor trees I was pulling out of my driveway the other day, and I looked up at the leaves of the trees, and they're just drooped over, hanging there, just choking to death because of the heat, wilted, languishing, mourning, being attacked. See, that's what a lot of people's finances look like. When you look at their lives, it doesn't need to be that way. It isn't that way. Not if you serve God. Not if you really do what God tells you in his prioritized plan for your life. I like what it says in Proverbs 28, 25. It says, he that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. Pride blocks. Pride blocks the blessing. Hello. Yeah. When we have pride, we say that God's word works, but we have a better plan. When we have pride, we say, you know, God says to sow seed, to tithe. God says to get into his... Uh, Get in that plan of prosperity in a, you know, in Luke 6, 38 talks about the sower and about sowing seed and about how God will give you the increase and, and he'll actually pour it out into your lap. Given it shall be given, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men and women give unto your bosom. Uh, arrogance says that I know better than God does, so I'm going to keep my money in my pocketbook. I'm going to keep my money in my wallet. God really, uh, you know what? I can get by. 
And it really doesn't make any difference uh, if I sow or not. Well, the reason why it doesn't make a difference many times is you're not sowing the amount of money God told you to sow in the first place. And you're not sowing when God tells you to sow. The Holy Ghost knows. How many know the Holy Ghost knows the way to the blessing? So here it says, he that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. See, it causes strife within yourself. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Shall be made fat. It's time to take off the um, blinders and take off the restricted area that we placed on God in the area of our finance. Whatever you let go down here, God will let go up there. Can you say amen? Thank you, Jesus. I like what it says here. And you know what? Um, people are bound with a stronghold when they do not sow the amount and level that God wants them to sow. They are bound with a stronghold. Look what it says in Zechariah 9, 12. The Bible says, well, in the Bible it says obedience is better than sacrifice, right? Obedience is better than sacrifice. But in Zechariah 9.12 it says, Turn you to the stronghold. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Yes. Many of us were hopeful, but we're prisoners. We're bound by a stronghold. Did you know that you can die poor and still go to heaven? Did you know that you can die sick and still go to heaven? There's a lot of things you can have or, or not have and still go to heaven. But Zechariah 9, 12, turn ye at the stronghold, uh, uh, to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Every, uh, even today I will declare that I will render double unto thee. I will render double unto thee. God is waiting to give you a double portion. God is waiting to, like Job, increase you and just double everything. Amen? There's strongholds that God has, bastions, where he'll put you in a place. I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. Men have stepped on my head, but God has put me into a large place or a wealthy place. There's a wealthy place, a stronghold that God can put you in that no, no matter what comes your way, no matter what circumstances and situations you might find yourself in, no matter how things look, you'll be in that rich place, that wealthy place, that stronghold of God. Nothing will be able to rob and pillage and plunder you, but you will only increase. The devil was so mad at God with Job because God put a hedge up around Job, and, and the devil complained because he said, everything he has increases. And he doesn't lose anything. I can't take anything. I can't steal from him. I cannot ruin him. Because, Lord, you've got a hedge up around him that is a blessing hedge. Amen. My God, I feel that for someone here today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, but what we have to do is return to God. What do you mean by that? Well, he said, wherein have you robbed me? In my tithes and in, in, your, in your tithes and offering. And he, and he talks about in chapter one of, of uh, Malachi, that people walk around with bags with holes in them and the money just pouring out. You know, and I know people like that. Seem like no matter what they do, the, you know, the checks just go into paying the devil. Paying the devil. And 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 and, and it, it doesn't matter how much they get, they lose it by the end of the month. Hello. They don't save anything. You know, salvation. One of the short words in salvation is save. Save. No, it's not losation, it's Salvation or salvation. Yeah. So it says here in, in Job 22, um, 
I believe it's 22 and 23. It says, if you return to the Almighty, again, who has the power to get wealth, to give you wealth, who has the power to bring wealth? The Almighty has the power to do it. If you return to the Almighty One, thou shalt be built up. Built up. And I'll tell you what, when you're languishing and when you're stressed and when you don't see the money, and when you when you don't have the finances, and when your bills are stacking up, and it just looks like, you know, uh, you're not getting anywhere. You're not being built up. If all that is happening, and you return to the Almighty, He'll build you up. Right in the middle of indemnity, right in the middle of the challenge, right in the middle of the hurricane, right in the middle of the situation. He'll build, 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 build you up. And then, this, then he says, thou shalt put away iniquity from thy tabernacles. Do you know, do you know what stops a lot of prosperity is sin. He that Hideth his sin, shall not prosper. You know, and uh, some people just enjoy sin too much. But in verse 24, it says, Then thou shalt lay up gold as dust, and gold, the gold of Orf, as the stones of the brook. Verse 25, Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Thou shalt have plenty of silver. And you know, a long time ago, I got my eyes off of the American dollar. And I got my eyes on God's uh, bartering tools for, for wealth. And that's gold and silver. Gold and silver. Gold and silver. God likes to deal with gold and silver. Then shalt, thou shalt have thy delight in the Almighty, and thou shalt lift up thy face to God. Verse 27, thou shalt make thy... Prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vow. I don't care how long or how much you pray. You cannot prosper without tithing and offering. God will let you just do what you do and think that you're getting ahead, but you're really falling behind. But I like what it says here because thou shalt be built up. And the Almighty shall be thy defense. When he talked to Abraham and he was going to bless him mightily, he told Abraham, I am thy shield. And in the Hebrew, it says, your rapid increasing money supply. Or I am thy shield and thy great reward. I am thy shield, Abraham, and thy great reward. Or in the Hebrew, the, the, rea the real Hebrew, it says, I am thy shield and thy rapid increasing money supply. Rapid increasing money supply. Isn't that good? Rapid increasing money supply. Rapid increasing money supply. It doesn't slow down. It just speeds up. I don't care about inflation. I don't care about depression. I don't care what it's going on. God is the almighty one and he rules the nations and he controls and causes shots and he does it from heaven and he intervenes on the earth and he knows how to get to your dress he knows where you live and he knows what you can have and what you could what what he wants to give you can you say amen and he can make it happen he can bring it about Whoo! hallelujah that's awesome stuff so just think about think about those things as we move into July into July into, into, into July you know what is it what's the date today 11th 11th this is the 11th already I mean you know you're in the seventh month I mean you're moving you're moving into the last quarter. I mean, last quarter will be here before you know it, and the year will be over. How old are you? 
And how long have you been waiting for your ship to come into harbor? How long have you been waiting to live the, quote, golden years of your life? Turn to, uh, what's this last scripture then? For those who have been waiting for their <coughs> ship to come in on the golden years, or uh, <coughs> live, live, living for, to see the dreams come true. Most dreams need to be financed. God can finance your dream. He can pay them off. He can, he can bring about situations where your dreams will come into being just because God pours out his blessing on someone around you and they open up and say, you know what, you, you, know what? you need to be living like this. You know what, you haven't been having this. And you know what, you should be over here. God can talk to somebody. Hello. Woo, hallelujah. I mean, God make it the way where there seemeth to be no way. He could do things that we never counted on before, we never dreamed before. You know, in, in, in Malachi, it says, he, he, says if, he says, if you give a tithe and you sow offerings, he said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Watch this. That you cannot contain an uncontained flow. I mean, a deluge, a downpour that you'll have so much that your dreams will be no problem. Can you say amen? Now, let's just finish up that last scripture in Joel. Uh, let's read um, the first part of that, start with verse 1, and we'll read down a few verses. I'm not going to pull it up. Maybe somebody could read it uh, for us. And then we'll, we'll close out there. Yeah. I'm telling you what. I feel the ripples of the water right now. Uh, God's angelic forces are getting ready to move some money your way. Heaven's about to tip your direction. I believe it. Let's just start reading from verse 1. Okay. Blow ye the, the trumpet in Zion. And the sound the alarm. In my holy mountain. Let, let all the inhabitants of the land. Tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh. It is nigh at hand. A day of darkness. And of gloominess, of clouds, and of thick darkness, okay, he's talking about the army of the Lord, so let's drop down below that a few verses. Let's drop down below that a few verses. We want to get to restoration here, but they keep moving. Now, we want to get below the army. I, I, I may have to pull it up. All right. God's sending an army. No, wait, you know, that, that's a key scripture again. We read it in Job 22, 23, about returning to the Almighty. And now in Joel, a famous restoration chapter, he says to turn. Turn ye even to me. Verse 12, turn ye even to me. Go ahead. With all your heart. See, a lot of people are turning, but not with all their heart. I can tell the difference. I can look at people and, and, and see that they're not turned with their whole heart. They're there, but they're not there. All right, go ahead and finish. 
And with fasting. And with weeping. Okay, continue. And with mourning. Fasting, weeping, mourning. All right. Instead of crying over your bills, go back to God and cry over your own life. Cry over your own um, misstep. Cry over your uh, broken relationship. Cry over uh, why you have lost your first love. Cry over those things, right? All right, continue. Let's move quick. Let's move quick. Okay, bring your heart. Not your garments. Go ahead. In other words, it's not a surface. Not a, We're not talking about, oh, Lord, forgive me. Oh, Lord, you know, um, I'm sorry. Um, and then move on. No, this is, this is getting down and really getting fundamental with God. And really letting him search you and see where you have misstepped and you have misappropriated and you have misinterpreted and you've mistreated him. That's why the that's why the resources aren't flowing like a river. <clears throat> okay, continue. He's gracious and merciful and slow to anger. Look at that. Go ahead. And of great kindness. <clears throat> and repenteth him of the evil. Who knows if he will return and repent? In other words, he'll he'll return. And, let me do that. He'll return and change his mind. Just read. He'll return and change his mind. And leave a blessing behind. And leave a blessing behind. See, you can tell. God knows. He knows where we're living. This isn't just a religious service. This is a service where we meet God. All right. Even a meat offering and a drink offering. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Where do we get to? Let's get down to where it talks about uh, the caterpillar, the locust. Let's read that part. Verse 23, uh, be glad then, you children of Zion. No, we're, we're, we're missing it. Anyway, God says that he will, he will return to us, or he'll repair that which has been eaten by the <clears throat> palmer worm, the canker worm, the locust. Verse 25. Read that out loud. And the floor shall be full of wheat. And the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. See, you know, and I'm going to send this audio out. Everybody needed to hear this from the beginning. But, you know, we can't do that. But we'll have to send the audio out for you so you can understand. But anyway, he pours out oil and wine and he gives grain And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, okay, which I sent. Let's read 24 again. And the floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine, with, with wine and oil. See, it all is dependent upon our turning to God. It's all of our, all of our re, return to God and not serving him half-heartedly. God wants all of you, not part of you. God knows what's going on. You think he's an idiot? He's not an idiot. He sees. He knows exactly where you're at. He knows what you, he knows if you're serving him or not. He knows if you love him or not. 
He knows if you're if you're if you're in sin or you're not in sin. He knows all about it. You know, as we read in Job 22, verse 23 and 24, and all the way down, it talked about uh, turning from iniquity, returning to the God Almighty. Amen. And you say, behold, I give you power. Power comes from God. We read where it said God, God owns power. He is, he is power. And then in Deuteronomy 8.18, 8, he says, behold, I give you power to get wealth. And that's why so many people are just getting a little dibble, little dribble, just a little itty bitty drop. And they're not getting uh, like a tree planted by the river, by the rivers of water. The rivers of water are not constantly flowing. There's always a there's always a break. There's a there's a strain. There's there's a loss. There's you know what I mean. Um, but there's when you when you're like a tree planted by the river by the waters, you have a continually flow of God. It never stops. It's always a feast. It's always a celebration. It's always a joy. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, you know what? Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like people around me with big pockets. I mean, let's, let's be honest about it. I like people that's got some, you know, they got some stuff. Amen. Not always, not always just... Um, getting from paycheck to paycheck and just barely making it by, just barely enough, just barely, you know. What's that saying about your life? Some The spigot's been turned off or it's been turned down. That's frustrating when I try to wash my car, you know, and it's, uh, and I got I try to turn on that spigot, and, you know, things coming out, a little dribble here, you know. Try to th throw it on the window and catch it before it runs off. <laughs> wash the car. But man, when you get over there and, 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 and you know, turn on that spigot, and somebody, you know, really r turns that thing up and that water comes poof, gushing out. Boy, you can just spray that hard car off and wash it down and get it done quick. You know, and that's the way it is with cash. That's the way it is with finance. That's the way it is with money. That's the way it is with resources. God is the one that can make it happen for you. Amen. I mean, he'll do it. I mean, he told Solomon, we just read it before everybody got here, uh, that he, he said, I'm going to give you riches and wealth. First, he said, I'm going to give you understanding and knowledge. Then he said, I'm going to give you riches and wealth. Unlike anything you've ever anybody's ever seen before, or they were even see after you. They never seen it like this. And God said in the scripture in Chronicles that I. He says I am God over all the kingdoms of the earth and all the nations. God owns it all. But Jesus said, a greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Solomon is here. But yet Jesus, but God told Solomon, he said, I'm going to give you wealth and riches like nobody's ever seen before or will ever see after you. But Jesus said, a greater than Solomon is here. What is the problem? There is no problem. Jesus is the remedy. Jesus is a solution. Jesus is the open door to the treasury of God. My goodness, we need to move our service to 830. I think everybody gets there at 830. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, but I'm glad you're here. Don't get me wrong. But Jesus is the open door to the treasury of heaven. Yeah. 
Jesus said, you believe in God. He said, believe also in me. Believe also in me. Glory to God. There's no shortages with Jesus Christ. There are no shortages with Jesus. Just look at the life of Jesus. Was he ever shorted anywhere? Did he ever do without anywhere? Did anybody ever do without around him? He's an unlimited resource. He's infinitum. All things are created by him. All things are created for him. And all things go back to him. For him and by him and everything goes back to him. It's all a loop. Loop. All you have to do is, uh, he said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask what you will and it shall be done. Get in that financial loop. Get in that financial, because everything's created by him and for him and flows back to him for his pleasure. Jesus said, it's my father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. He derives pleasure out of that. So it, it's just uh, remarkable. The way God does what he does. I don't care what the world's up to, what they don't, you know, I don't care. I mean, what do they, what do they say? You know, now gas is, gas is coming down. Money was going up. I still had money to buy gas. You still have money to buy gas? It was going up. I still had money to buy gas. So what? Go on up some more. We still have money to buy gas. God owns the gas. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, he's a God of plenty. Um, there you go. You shall eat it. Wow. All right, you don't need. <laughs> I like that too, but that's not appropriate for now, is it? Uh, look at that. Let's look at verse 20, 26 in Joel chapter 2. You'll never be ashamed. You eat in plenty and you'll be satisfied. Everybody say, I'm going to eat in plenty. I'm going to be satisfied. That, that doesn't sound too bad, does it? All right, we can go ahead and uh, dislodge from Facebook. God bless everybody from Facebook. Talk to you later. Enjoy. Be blessed. Bye-bye for now. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>